Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Have a good rest, good sleep. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to open up with a couple of songs. So just uh, relax and close your eyes and take it in.
I would do anything to learn to fly. You are my goal. Oh, what I am longing for. I am yours. my one choice trusting in you is all I want to do my trust is in you I'm longing to be close to you close to you close to you Far across the ocean, so blue, high up in the sky, I see you light and love pour through down on me. God, I feel you down on me, oh God, I feel you, God, you're everything I see, God, you are everything to me Oh God, I found you within You are everything I want to be Love has said I had to go through to remember that I am you. The dark clouds that had to go by, all the tears I let my eyes cry to leave the world behind and say goodbye God hear everything I see God you are everything You are everything I 
So precious to <clears throat> have the opportunity just to let the mind be still for for a moment.
So this retreat is only three days, barely three days, and really want to invite you to see this retreat as an invitation to an experience that can extend throughout your life. This retreat is very relaxing. It, didn't, it doesn't really require a lot of effort on our part. Everything is arranged. Everything is orchestrated. Even the fact that you heard somewhere in your mind that you're to come, and you act on it. You already hear guidance. You already know what is, the, is this inner nudge and how to act on it. Some part of you has already done it. And when you come here, the spirit just comes straight through like a lightning to, to the mind. Bring the truth, come in. But really, it's very little that's required on our part, if you really think about it. And can, can, can you imagine a life like this? It's just a life of relaxation, uncompromising wisdom that saturates your mind when you need it. And it's very uplifting. It takes you completely above this world and the problems and the problems in your life. And everything that you seem to need in this life is orchestrated that without your effort. Can you imagine a life like that? Yes, the body is still going to seem to to meet the people, to do the things that you seem to do, but your mind is not there. Your mind is not thinking about what am I to do next. I have this bill to pay. I have to figure out where the money is going to come from. I have to figure out how to solve the problems. Your mind is so lit up by the light. It's like last night when the light comes through. That's where your mind is. It's completely, it's completely filled with light. And you accept that and you stay there. That's what A Course in Miracles is aiming at. It's basically saying that in the end, you're still going to walk this earth. You're still going to see whatever you see. You see the street, you see the people. You're still going to see everything, but your mind is seeing them in a different way. Your mind is putting them in a different category. The category is called unreal. And what is real is your experience. What is real is the light that you, you, you abide, that you know the kind of joy. You're, you're one with everything and everyone. One with God. You know you're so loved beyond measure. That is, that's what we're here for. That's what we're entitled to. And Across the Miracles actually says that. We're entitled to miracles. And he says, every day should be devoted to miracles. Miracles are natural, and if it doesn't happen, something has gone wrong. That's the kind of entitlement that we have. Miracles are so natural, if it doesn't happen, something is wrong. So, I, I really feel like let's today, let today be in a day of, of experience, because because all this very deep concept and metaphysics is aiming at bringing an experience to us. And with the experience, then we won't be doubtful. But without the experience, we will always be doubtful. Nothing in concept will convince our mind what is true and what isn't. And Jesus actually even said in the Course that 
Whoever will see conflict in the course will see it. And whoever chooses not to see it won't see it because, because he gives the power right back to our desire. And whatever you desire to see, you will see it. Whatever you desire to, to, to receive, you will. And he said, universal theology is, is not possible because the theology are all words, all concepts. The concepts are all just limited boxes of beliefs. But universal experience is, is not only possible, but it's necessary. So we have to aim for a universal experience. So I think this, this is our goal today. We are here for an experience, and hopefully in the experience, understanding comes. And that's, that's truly my experience, you know. At one point, I remember um, years ago, David actually said in one of the conferences, he said, you never understand the course un until you're on the other side. And I thought, oh my God, good to know. Let me, let me quit trying to understand this because, because in the experience, when you are so lit up and one with everything, when you actually have peace, you understand everything in that. That's the kind of experience we're aiming for, and it will seem to be sparse at the beginning. It comes and it goes until the desire is stronger to invite it more and more, then they become consistent. That's the, that's the way it works. So, I think yesterday some of you asked about practical application. Like, okay, okay, sounds really good. Sounds really good. How do I do it now, today? Just give me one thing that I can start. Um, and I talked about a little bit about no private thoughts, no people pleasing, and that's how, how I truly started practice for real. Because before that, I was talking about the concepts a lot with my group, and we exchange our opinions about what we think the Course is, is talking about. And then when I heard this group of people are practicing no private thoughts and no people pleasing, I'm like, I know I'm not doing it. And I know if I do that, I'm tapping into something I've never done before. So that, that I know. I'm going to tap into an experience I've never had before. So, So I wanted to just talk a little bit about private thoughts. So private thoughts, actually Jesus says in the Course that it's not that you shouldn't have private thoughts. It's like wrong or something. It's actually you don't have private thoughts. You don't. But that's all you know. Why is that? Because we talked a little bit, at, we touched on what the ego is. The ego is not in the same as some other spiritual um, reality teachings are like, you have the ego that's a healthy ego sometimes, and some, sometimes the ego refers to this personal pride. In the Course, the ego is referring to a wrong mind, the mind that is forgetting that we're one with love, the mind that is convinced that we're separate from, from God, convinced that we are in fear, we are separate from each other. So that is the belief system, that's everything built on that. Everything that has a beginning and an end, built on scarcity and limitation, that's what we call ego. And the way to back to that truth is to undo the ego. And how to undo that? The only way to undo it is to expose it. The only reason that ego is active in our mind is because it's hidden. Because if I am telling, if I am telling you that okay, I believe I'm separate from God, and everybody is like, I don't know, I connect with that. 
That's so far from our consciousness. We don't walk around every day thinking, "I really believe I'm separate from God," or not. That's not something that we think about every day. And why is that? Because it's hidden. It's hidden in the unconscious mind. So if we don't expose our unconscious mind, then what is hidden is running. That's why you know, as deep and as uncompromising is the metaphysics of a crossing miracles, the practice is actually extremely simple and straightforward. The practice is to expose what is not true, and all the ego thoughts are not true, and we have to have an experience of it. We have to have an experience that what we are thinking. Based on this wrong mind is not true, so that is the rationale behind, and the the reason behind we have to expose those private thoughts just for healing. It's not to be righteous. It's not to be to be good stu- spiritual students. It's actually to heal. That's the only way to go about it. Um. So we were thinking this morning we are going to have a little exercise to to a little bit of do a little bit of exposing. But when I talk exposing, I'm you know the ego mind will feel threatened straight away. Like okay, what what do I have to expose? And I want to guarantee you, there's nothing to fear with that because because it's not personal. What we're exposing is not personal because the ego is not personal. The ego is one thought system that that we share, and because of that thought system, we believe there are seven billion people on Earth. We believe everybody has their own private mind. Everybody has their own private thoughts. Everybody has their own judgments. So that's the belief, but the the fact is that ego is not personal. And when we actually get into this purpose to expose, we start to see nobody actually have private thoughts. We're all sharing the same mind, even the ego. Once we expose it, it just ceases to exist in our mind, and light would come through. So, but we have to start from where. We believe we are, and in our mind, when I first started, I do believe a lot of personal secrets, and personal judgments, personal problems, and I cannot leap to say that okay, this is not real. I'm not a body. I am light. I can hear the spirit. None of it is really connecting with where I was at. So I have to start where I was at. I have to start talking about this is my feeling right now. What you're saying triggers something emotionally because this is what what I think. I have to start from the thinking level at that at that point, and this is what we're gonna do today. So what is that we're gonna expose? I'm gonna pair you guys up. Sixteen. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna pair you guys up. You're gonna have a partner, and the format. I just introduce the format a little bit.、Um, the format is I'm gonna have one person、um, express first, and the other person listen, and then we switch. We only do that for ten minutes, and then we switch, and then ten minutes, and then we switch back. Another ten minutes, and we switch back. So, why do we do that? Why why do we do that? Because I want to give you guys an experience of using expression to 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 expose the ego and the kind of freedom that you will have afterwards. And、um, in in our、um, community, actually. We basically just do that once a day. We 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 do it in normally in lunch time. We have a group and we express. We have some guidelines in expressing because 
we're not really just expressing to say, this is what I think about you. Da 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 da. There is no purpose in that. And we have to always remember our purpose is to expose the ego together. We're not really here about each other, we're here to expose the ego in our own mind. Um, so the purpose is to let go of the judgment. The purpose is to expose so that I can see that these thoughts are not real. That's the purpose underneath it. And in our group expression, when we do that, we actually have the guideline to have everybody else hold the space. So it's not an interaction exercise. It's not something that when someone is speaking, everybody else jump in to say, I know your problem, this is what I'm gonna, I'm gonna help. Nobody does that. So we just give everybody the space. So in this exercise today, I'm not gonna do a group, we're just gonna do a pair. But it's the same principle. The one who is listening actually has the most work to do. The one who is listening during the 10 minutes when your partner is expressing, you are going to hold the space. And how do you hold the space? I'm gonna talk a little bit about that because that's really where A Course in Miracles is teaching us how to be true in true empathy. You know, we know this word empathy, we want to help, we know that our mission is not all about ourselves in this world. We want to help, we want to give, we want to shine our light. Um, but how, how do we give? So in this exercise, I want to just introduce this way so that you can have an experience of how to offer true empathy. The way to offer true empathy is to step away, is not to do anything in action. And it may look and sound and feel very, very um, counterintuitive. Because when your partner is sharing, you know, sometimes they have tears, sometimes they really get into their, their um, grievance and their sorrow, and you want to be of comfort. You at least want to nod to acknowledge that you're listening. And today, I want you to step away from all of that. You're not nodding. You're not comforting them by touching them. You're not saying anything. You're not responding in a way that, that you think the other person wants you to respond. And why is that helpful? Because we have to accept a humble place in our mind that we don't know what the problem is. We don't know what the other person's problem is because I don't know what my own problem is. I'm still perceiving seven billion people. I'm still believing the ego. So the exercise, even though you're the one listening, you are there to heal your own mind. You're not there to heal the other person. So how do I heal my own mind? But by calling for help. So when I'm listening, I'm really listening to the spirit in my own mind, not to the person's suffering. And that's, that's how you can be truly helpful. And experience will tell you that that is so. And the one who is expressing, this is what I, I want you to remember, you're not expressing to make the other person understand why you are suffering. <laughs> because um, you're expressing to release. So in a way you can trust that you don't need to give the whole history of your problem. You start by where you're at emotionally right now, in this moment. And maybe you came here with a lot of problems in your life, but right now something else is bothering you. Very, 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 very minor right now. 
and that's where we start, because there's no separate problems really. No problems are different, but anything that is on your mind that you can't let go, that is bring that's blocking your peace in this very moment, is where we start with. And you don't even have to give a huge background about who you are, why you're feeling this way. There's no need. We are here just to expose and release. So go straight to, I feel. I feel this, and if some kind of background is necessary to bring this emotion for yourself, not for the other person to understand, for yourself, then go there. Just remember that this exercise of expressing and exposing is all for you. However, it can help you to go deeper inside. To see something that you really want to let go, you're so tired of the burden. Then do that, and it's all for you. The other person who is listening is the same. The exercise is all for you. It doesn't matter what the other person is expressing. I want you to focus on tuning into what you hear in your mind from the spirit. That is true empathy. True empathy is not to join in the suffering. Actually, to join the suffering is not uplifting the suffering in any way.、Mm-hmm. Because this world is the ego's world, is a world of suffering. It's a world of, of conflict. It's a world of attack. So you will see suffering everywhere if if we believe. The ego to be real. We see suffering everywhere, and the world is telling us, "Okay, if you want to help, understand their suffering and solve it there." And I can tell you, it's not going to uplift anybody by you joining your mind in that suffering. So you can be truly helpful to to hear the suffering be totally present. And then tune in your mind to a solution that's much, much higher than the suffering. And I can tell you, our mind is so connected that without you saying a word, your companion's mind will have no choice but to link up with this higher mind. That is how you can be helpful. And Jesus says in the course that a miracle always blesses both. It's never for one. It's it's for both. So when you offer this miracle, seemingly is offering to the other by not joining them, by holding this high truth. But really, you are you are offering the miracle to yourself because you started to to have the light shining on your mind. So this is a very very powerful exercise. You will see the power of. Not interfere with the healing. You will see the power of of healing by just your mind tuning into the higher higher perspective. And for the one who is telling the story, you will also see the power of not hiding, not protecting, and let it all out. It's almost like you're speaking to the spirit in your heart, in your mind. And you also will realize you don't need anybody to fix you, because once your mind let it go, light comes through. You know what to do. That's very very powerful. And the reason that I only give each one of you ten minutes, and then we we do two rounds or three rounds even. But every round we only have ten minutes. Each why is that? Because. Because you don't need to get so deep in your suffering and in your stories. I know that we all believe in our stories very tightly. You know, when we think about it, we can get so emotional, and I know that. But but this is an exercise to let you learn how to drop it as well. So when I when I ring the bell at the end of ten minutes. I want you to drop wherever you are. Just drop it like that and switch roles straight away.、Um, and also, I, I do want to set it up a little bit about 
this no private thoughts is is very threatening for the for the mind that still believes in the ego. So it's not aim it's not helpful if you just say, okay, I have to go out to share all my thoughts and all my secrets to everybody I meet on the street, in my workplace, in my family. This is not helpful. Why is it not helpful? Because this whole whole thing is for you to heal. It's for you to let go of the ego in your mind. So you, Jesus says it's not helpful to to increase fear. It's so loving. Jesus says this healing journey there is no helpfulness in increasing fear in your mind. So he is not gonna increase fear in your mind at all. So you can relax in that. Okay, then what is helpful? This is something that we start practicing with someone that we feel safe with. Someone we know that holds the same purpose. Someone we know that if I let out this someone is not gonna judge me or try to fix me. This person can just say, I know that you, that's what you believe about yourself, but I'm gonna hold the high truth for you. So this is why we use this kind of retreat and settings to do this kind of exercise. And in our community, that's what we do. Gradually, of course, you will gain so much confidence and so much trust, you will be able to to extend that, but right now, I think it is very, very important to not scare yourself. Um, so at the beginning, when we start expressing, you probably will feel it's, it's still a little intimidating to share with someone that you're assigned with, because we're gonna assign someone to you randomly, maybe this person is not someone you know, Maybe you'll be like, I don't want to tell them about my deepest emotional things. But I just, let's just do this exercise for yourself. To the degree you want to go there, you will feel the freedom yourself. And we're going to have everybody hold that presence today to say, okay, whatever that's expressed here is not who they are. Is what they believe to be themselves. That's why they're suffering. So it's up to all of us to see it as false and not go back and say, oh, I, I remember you told me this problem of your life. We're not doing that after this session. You know, everything is just to be released so that we can see each other as true and who they are. So I feel like, okay, when we start expressing, try to go with the emotional charge, try to go where you still feel there is something burdening you in your mind. Try to be authentic, try to avoid like ongoing explanations. Just go straight to the point and remember it's all just for you. Any questions? Yeah? So when I, I am listening, I have to, to think that I have to connect and try to heal myself yes. about what I'm missing. Yeah, because um, A Course in Miracles is actually put everything in a very simple category. It says everything you, you see is either an expression of love or a call for love. That's it. There's no third category. So expression of love, we, we know exactly what it is. You know, when we suddenly see even a smile or a hug or everybody happy, that's expression of love. What is a call for love? The war, people attack each other, people attack me. That's an old call for love. And he said, but no matter what it is, the response from you is the same is to offer love. So it doesn't matter whether you see expression of love, you respond by offering love. Or you perceiving a call for love, your response is still expressing love, love. So in that way, even what we do is extremely simplified. 
then our responsibility is okay. How how do I offer love right now? How? That becomes the only question to face every single situation. And in this exercise, I yeah, I encourage you to to ask that question, but not attempt to answer it by yourself. Just to say, okay, I'm listening. I perceive a call for love, and I want to know how to offer love, and see what comes through. And if you're completely caught in their in their story, that's fine too. Just watch your reaction to it. How much you feel the obligation to engage? How much you feel it's cruel if you don't respond to them? How much you want to offer them a tissue and a pat on their back? How much you feel you need to? And this exercise, I'm going to give you permission to step out from all of that, and really have an experience of what is truly helpful, and what is truly loving, and what is truly empathetic. Can we do this without our own effort? Can we do this just be by relying on this, the light in our mind? So yeah. Any other question? Yes. Per ten minute session, one issue. Is that right? Doesn't. Well, it, I would say like don't plan for what you're gonna express. Don't don't plan for it. Just I would just encourage you just to say okay. There is something that's burdening me right now. Go there, and then if it is lifted, then move to the next one. If it is lifted, move to the next one. If you got nothing. Just be quiet. There's nothing. No need to fit in the space. I don't even don't even plan to think you know what the issue is because I I see a lot of people once they start things come up that they didn't know that they want to share. They they didn't know that's there. So don't attempt to even know what what is here to to be healed. <laughs> and I think everybody would like to hear about your experience. If you want to share, so we have some time now, and would love to hear what was your challenge, what was your experience. Yeah. Okay. If you want to come up, because the microphone cannot reach that far. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Fantastic experience. Uh, I came here since I arrived. I was feeling a little bit of headache. It's related, oh, sorry. it's related to my period and I have this issue every month. I have this unstable behavior like um, sometimes I have headaches, sometimes I have PMS. And I've been asking for God um, to help me because this uh, disturbs me a lot. And, and I started to talk to Fabiola, and it was so interesting the connection that we have, because all these things that I've been asking, not only, I think that I have to work more about my, my feminine side, I think I'm very young, I'm very old, always I've been like trying to prove to myself, or maybe for everybody, you know, but that I, I can't do it by my own. And this is related to my story with my family and, and also my independence and financial independence. So I have maybe to release a little bit more, you know. Not maybe, I'm sure about now. And we've been talking and, and then I, I said that. This was one, one point. Yeah, it's all, all about my, 
the, the way I try to control everything, you know. I'm, I'm Capricorn, I'm very want to do, and I have this drive to do everything on my own, and I need to prove this to myself. And, and I, I know that I have to, to work with this. And then I we started to, to talk, and she, I don't know if I can talk about what she, she told me also, and what was the, my experience, yeah. And what she said, it was very related to things that I passed through. She started to talk about her life, and and I know that uh, it was a confirmation that I'm on my way, on my path, that I need to talk more about all the stuff that I passed through and all my awakening, and it was very deep because the connection is so strong and she has so much to, to, to help me also and all the, the things that she told me. And also, what I told her, I know that I can help and it's also a confirmation for me on my path. So I'm very grateful for this experience. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your experience with us, Louis. Okay, I think it's worth sharing. Um, well, first of all, when you uh, paired me up with Roberto, uh, I looked at you and I, I was thinking, I think I know what you're doing here. <laughs> After watching the movie, I said, okay, she's... Because I look at, looked at him and, and he looked at me and said, what the fuck would she do something like that? <laughs> And uh, because, I mean, we are all looking, for, you know, to have different experiences, maybe, you know, um, meet other people and sort of get a fresh start to get to know people better. And then you put the two of us together, you know, like maybe you have unfinished business. Or I thought that, that could be something like that. So when we started and... Uh, and he started, and he, you know, shared with, him, with me what was going on with his life. And it was incredible to look at my own ego and say, oh, and I wanted to fix every single one of those things. And I wanted to come out and say, no, no, this I can do. Oh, no, this is easy. We can fix this way. Oh, no, this is, you know, it's all in your mind. We can fix that. And I was like, Jesus, I mean, this is so powerful because it was a package uh, that in a way it, it portrays my entire existence, you know, and how I always looking at the way to fix things. And, and it's something that uh, Jeffrey told me this morning, even when Roberto had the fall yesterday at the waterfall, and, and how many times we just go after, even without getting the prayer, and we go after helping people and and he said, how many times, you know, if you see someone falling and you go help them right away without even thinking, you're taking, that, taking away the possibility of that person to develop the strength to stand up on, the, on their own. And in, in hindsight, you look at my life and say, well, I, I believe I might have done that a couple billion times. And, and, uh, and, my, and obviously after, you know, he shared and, you know, that I shared what was going on and what my suffering was coming from. And then the third part, when Roberto obviously being Roberto, he thought that, you no, know, the third part would be him analyzing what I had just said <laughs> <laughs> as my personal shrink. But it was funny because it's amazing how we people have a completely different view of us and he was like, oh, I had no idea that this was what was going through. I see the, you from a different angle. And, and it, it would be, it's so powerful when you actually can let it out, you know, and have someone say, okay, maybe what we have in common that we're just not being kind to ourselves. And that's why we both, you know, we burst out in laughter after we're done because we look, man, we are really hard on ourselves, you know, we're medieval. And, uh, and we started just laughing and laughing because, you know, in the way, it was just, you know, the whole rest in God part.
part was for the both of us, you know, that's where we find peace. So, just wanted to share that. Thank you, thank you so much for sharing. It's like our, our brothers are so worthy. Once we trust, you know, we, we don't hold back, we don't say this, this one is not what I want, that one, we just go forth with giving ourselves over to it and just see the healing power. We have no idea what a gift that is. That's so beautiful, Louis. Thank you. I can try to elaborate something here. Like what Louisina was sharing, I had two things first. Like Louis, I thought, oh, these things are so easy to fix. Like I could <laughs> give her so many advice, but I was trying to not to be in this mindset of advising, but what I really realize is that she has no problem at all, like even if it seems like Thank it's you. painful, <laughs> and I see she's engaging, I see it's, it's really just a story, and and there's not a problem, I can really see her as a <laughs> perfect being, beautiful, white being, so like, it was obvious for me, she, has, she doesn't have any problem, sorry. And then when I was sharing too, and it's so, funny, then I see, okay, it's just, it's not a problem. It feels even ridiculous for me, like, to, because it's, it's so obvious that it's my ego making up something, so I engage with this story, and it's like, and I, I feel kind of attached. I even see that I don't want to release it completely, because if I do, I, it's almost like afraid of, being in the present and going for the guidance and going, so I feel like I'm not sure if I'm gonna release. But then, I, as a release, I also felt so good and so empty. So I had to do an effort to 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 because I'm doing so many worksheets these days that I feel I'm releasing so much that it felt so was like feeling good and just really wanting to rest in God and just. So it's nice, not engaging so much with and knowing it's not true and it's not real. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Uh, the idea that came to my mind the whole morning was uh, probably um, yeah. mm -hmm. one of the most beautiful scenes I've uh, seen uh, you know, with Christ. It was the, the washing of the feet, the washing of the feet that he did with the apostles just before crucifixion, right? And that's what we did this morning. So we are all uh, recognizing that uh, the person that was in front of us was the Christ that was uh, holding the space for us, for us to say. And, and uh, you know, there was, that his, his love was enough for me, for us to share. So it was exactly the same thing. And uh, and also very related to what we're doing here, asking for help. So it couldn't be more beautiful. How does it feel when the other person don't respond to 
to your story. <laughs> Does that feel freeing? It's amazing. <laughs> because the answer is inside of us. <laughs> they give you a chance to, to hear from inside, isn't it? It's like talking to yourself. Yeah. You're not talking to that person, actually. Yes. Saying so you can hear it. Yes. But then I feel it's so hard not to engage. Yeah. You want to come here and share a little bit? I, I didn't think any of this. Okay. <laughs> um, I feel it was so hard not to engage because it was similar to what Louise said, but then I didn't want to fix it. I just wanted to hug her or hold her and cry with her, you know what I mean? Because, in a way, it, um, the story touched me because it's very similar to what I've been living. <laughs> and it's almost like she's my mom. And I like the first impulse is to do the same thing as I've done with her, you know? And it was like hard not to, but at the same time, doing it in a different way. Like giving the love in a different way, like just letting it be and being able to let her get to her own responses. And for me, it was the same thing. Like when I, the first time I think I complained about how I was feeling, and then later on I was like, wait, but I'm just seeing like, the bad part of it, you know what I mean? Like, the scarcity, that's how I say? Okay, the scarcity, and not the abundance, and there's so much to be grateful for. And that, that it was really nice, like, saying at the first time, like, oh, complain, complain, and then, oh, wait. But then I heard myself, and I was like, oh, but there is more in it then. So it was beautiful. And I, I think it was, like, both ways. It was like that. That's the experience of no private thoughts, isn't it? No private problems. <laughs> when you start to hear other people talk, you're like, why are you living my life? <laughs> also nice talking to someone but doing that just for you and not interacting and trying to justify or trying to to look nice or to whatever this is very interesting exercise for for ourselves the healing, there is no one out there it's like the healing is something it's so I, much permission you have to give yourself to go to go deep into the emotion because the habit is to immediately shut down when we go there because there's so much light after this surface layer of of scarcity, of all the judgment, there's so much light underneath it. That's why all these emotions, it's, it's like, it's going to flood open, you know, like a flood. So the immediate feeling is to shut down. And you can imagine if someone wants to come fix it for you, how quick you're going to be like, okay, I'm the problem one, this person is better, they're going to give me advice and fix. It's not really something that you can truly give yourself permission to go as deep as you can. So I would say this exercise just gives us a glimpse that, okay, what would happen if we step out of the way? Does everything fall apart? But would you do this on your own as well? And this, would you look kind of do this on your own, somehow in front of a mirror or something? No, I, you know, this is, this is an experience because we need experience like this to know that it is okay to step out of the way. Not only that things won't fall apart, it's actually more helpful. And the helpfulness is, is to ourselves because I know you all tap into deeper love than just trying to fix problems. There is something that comes through. You can't even explain what it is. 
is the power, the power of, of the light. So this is an experience. And then when we go home, of course, these kind of exercises we can still do with our Mati companions who know the, the value of it. But it's going to be hard to sit in front of the dinner table with your parents and they're talking, you're like, <laughs> no response. It's, it's going to be hard. But again, of course, moving forward, you're still going to carry with you, I want to feel safe to continue to open up. So I'm going to go with the ones I feel safe to do this kind of exercise if I can. And if honestly there's nobody, then you know, journaling is, is a way to, to continue letting it all out. And sometimes spirit responds through even your own hands. But this is, this is very powerful. And then after a while, even when you go out to interact with people, you don't have to even obey the format of zero response anymore because you know the inner work is beyond form. You know, you know that you can stay with the spirit in your mind and then just allow whatever inner nudge you, you feel to come out. But it's not coming from you. It's not coming from Mike. It's not coming from trying to fix or trying to approve you. I want to make sure you know I understand you. Like, I, I want you to like me. I want, it's none of it. And if, if you're not sure you can do that, then just step out of the way completely like you did today. And start and gradually. As well as receiving the not looking for approval. It's been a while since I've a more option. You know, you have someone who's just like a mirror without any emotion. Yeah. It's so strong because you... You want to come and share a little bit? Yeah, sure. I mean, there was... To me, I don't need that, I don't think. Okay. <laughs> it's helpful when everybody can hear you. Huh? Alright, so they would... <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. It's loud enough. But um, definitely, especially doing this exercise with Mark, who is a type of profile. I mean, with entrepreneurs, you kind of look for that approval of certain things, right? I mean, it's... Um, and so it, it was, for me, it was powerful from that respect as well, to be able to just talk about things without, you know, kind of dealing with that not approval. And, and that was very powerful. And on the other side, listening, I mean, I... Whenever a thought would come to me, I would always go back and ask for help, like for soul, for, from the source, and I, I, um, so I, I was really trying to be like no attachment to, you know, solutionary, that's, that was my experience, I was instantly, something would come up, I would be right away to that, like, you know, try to bring myself to that mindset, but, um, yeah, as you said, I think it's something to be practiced, because it's, um, even, even, since the time and space doesn't exist, and for instance, between us, there's like 10 years in this dynamic, there's this reality in terms of you know, age difference, right? There's so many things, this is just crazy, you know, how, how, how those things resonate, you know, so it was, um, and also when you pair it up, you know, it's not you pairing it up, so there's a reason for these pairs to happen in that, in that sense. And um, so I'm just looking forward to trying it out in the real world. <laughs> because as you said, it's kind of like easy here where we have people in a setting that is very safe. We don't need to take care of the food. There's, there are no mundane problems, right? And then you have these things in the real world out there. And then you have to apply it. I think that's where the game begins. The, the practice is still the same, though, because it doesn't really matter where we are. Our response is our only re responsibility. How we look at things, how we respond when people present a problem, it's all the same. You know, the problem can seem to have degree of intensity, but it's still, what is, how, where do I responding from? Which voice do, am I listening to? It's always my own responsibility. So that is where the training is. And today is just like a, a very good glimpse of, oh wow, there is an incentive in this. And that's all we need to know. There is an incentive in this. Then the desire will bring it about. You know, the desire will, will help 
spirit will orchestrate everything, bring people to your life so that this can keep going. So thank you for sharing, Mac. It's interesting how I was making the exercise, like I was doing it to put out and express my issues, but at some point it was very clear I, 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 like I was very aware that I wasn't even engaging emotionally with what I was saying and I didn't like judge that as being cold or impersonal but it was just like coming out of the awareness that I was I, I was realizing how much of a joke it was. Like I was just like staring at my mind and going like wow like like it was like so clear that it was just like this mental almost like effort to find problems. <laughs> you know? It's just like and and then when I was listening to Mike, then I went on the same awareness but on the other side. And I was just like, man, why are you trying so hard to be unhappy, you know? It's like like why why are you making it so hard? And why are you, like why are you believing and engaging into that unhappiness formula and giving it so much importance and then it was my time again and then there were there were parts of it that I was just like speaking with the past like I, I was like expressing an old mark like an old version of myself because there was a, already a new one that, that wasn't giving importance to that. And, and it was just like, man, like, suffering really is an illusion. Like, and, and, and it was like the first time that I saw, I saw it so clearly. Because like, one thing is understanding it rationally. And going like, oh yeah, this is an illusion, this is an illusion, and uh, pain is an illusion. But if you keep it just mental, it's just escape route. It's just like you're running away from the problem. And this time, the lack of emotional engagement was just like, I'm not running away, I'm just not believing in it anymore. So it was very useful because for the first time I felt in my body what I was listening to last night about like just not believing in it disarms it. So I'm very grateful to Mike and I'm very grateful for everyone and, and the exercise because I feel like it might be easier than I've been making it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Was so powerful. I came here like 
thinking that I had issues about marriage and having children and my career. And I realized that um, something about building trust. That I am guided. And sometimes it's so hard to admit this. You know, this session, like, I had the inspiration to make, like, almost the same. I have group workshops, groups here in Brazil, and we did the same things. And I was, like, facilitating and was my first time as, like, a student. And then we were talking. And then I was so open heart. And then I realized that... It was only about focus. Like, I really can't choose, like, if I want to focus on illusion, and then my mind go away, then find the best story, and I'll be there, and I lost my presence. Or I can only choose to love her, because I was just listening, feeling grace and feeling grateful for her and then spirit talked to me that you know even this issue that you thought like you're not guiding it's not true at all it's definitely a choice and it was really important to make contact with this because I, I teach this and I see people living this in front of me and sometimes I feel like a far, 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 so fake. Fake, fake. Sometimes I feel so fake because I can see them feeling this but I'm not really feeling and only because I, it, sometimes it's hard for me to admit that it's in me. And it's only a choice, but sometimes I'm very afraid of Paulinha because I know her mind. <laughs> and I know that, can, that she can screw up everything. Even the guidance that I receive, like I receive many guidance and, and then I got afraid and going to the history and it was so important to say this and thank you Anna for holding this space thank you everybody to making this choice because like yeah love is a choice even in this world and we can live like this like, it doesn't matter if it's here or in the supermarket, in, in, I don't know, in the bank, whatever. I live this. <laughs> I, re I really do. And it's okay to admit this. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I guess this exercise was um, a relief for me in a lot of ways. So I don't know if everybody saw, but I was just like crying a lot when she started singing. I couldn't handle it. I was just like, I can't be here, otherwise I'll be like making noises and like ah in front of everyone. I'm going to disturb it all. So I I went outside. Um, I was crying and I was already talking to myself before the exercise, I was just like talking like that, that. Um, and I don't know, like suffering with some issues, whatever, and and just like I felt my energy like so low, I had to lay down for a while, and I was in the bathroom, 
there was a bee inside, and so I opened the door. It was closed before, but I opened the door so the bee could go out. And like five minutes later, Livia shows up. It's like, hey, we're gonna start an exercise. You should go there. It's like, yeah, okay, let's just go for it. And it was really interesting because it was an invitation to do exactly what I was already doing, just like a couple of minutes before, uh, but with the presence and really important presence, presence by the way. And it was interesting um, to see a lot of things. Okay, so first. Uh, it wasn't difficult for me at all not to judge and not to answer while she was speaking. Actually, it was a relief that was the first relief. Because sometimes I do really feel like we sometimes say much more than we should. It's like, and most of the time, like, I don't know, like people come and start um, talking their issues and uh, expressing themselves and the like. Oh, she needs me to say something, but I really don't want to say anything. But and then I keep like, I don't know. I push myself so hard to answer something and to make it according to the expectations of the other person. Like she wants me to, to I don't know, to help her in some way, but I can't. It's like she's the one who can help herself out, but I don't know what to do right now. So it was a really relief not to say anything, but the hard part was to say things and to permit myself not to be judged as well. So as I was speaking, I was like, oh my gosh, she's probably thinking I'm stupid. Oh no, she's probably thinking I'm weak. She's probably thinking a lot of things about me. And to hear her coming here and say like, she has no problems and exactly what you said, like you basically said the same thing, but like, how we keep on trying to be unhappy all the time. And that's pretty much what I am doing and probably what I've been doing my whole life. And uh, I don't know, I have a really low self-esteem and I always tend to put myself really down. And ever since I got here, I'm, I'm looking at you guys and you're all so special and you are all so smart. And so, I don't know, like amazing people and I'm, I was feeling so much less than you. I was like, what am I even doing here? There's so much more than me. Um, I'm, I'm not even supposed to be in this group. Like, they know so much more than me. And to hear every of you coming here and, like, expressing that you suffered as well. And and we're all, like, on the same journal. Uh, journal um, on the same, yeah, the same path and whatever. And... It's a relief as well, and and a way to to feel loved, and and that's actually funny because any of us has any of any problems at all. So let's just live with it, right, and stop being slavers of our own minds because maybe just living is the best choice, right? And that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, wow. You want to express? Um, it was really nice to, to exchange with Nana, and I could clearly see the the gain and not engaging and her not engaging to my problems that made me diff that made it difficult for me to engage with the drama so I had no drama more I was speaking and I said no I'm speaking but I'm making out I'm faking this is not, there's no drama there is I'm, I'm making a good story but I was always asking for the guidance to continue and then uh, on the second session. I felt that I really could say, and I started crying that when crush at something, what really matters to me, and where the real deal was, and um, it was nice because it, I, I'm still engaging to it, the, the big deal, and I, I'm, I'm asking myself if it's that my ego probably is my ego still, but 
while I was talking to her, what I could see is that there is a place in me that is really angry with being here. Like uh, um, David said yesterday about this error, like the ego is like a system, uh, error system. I was talking to Fernando yesterday that if everything we do when we come here is like to transcend this, then why I, re- I don't want to play this game. I want to be in this line. I belong to this line. Why, why did someone put me in here to just play this crazy game? It's a crazy game. <laughs> and I said, because when I had like these two experiences, like going to Assisi, then I went, when I went to Italy and I experienced this peaceful... And also when I went to India yes, uh, last year, I went by myself as a calling to, and when I was leaving there after a month, there was something inside me that said, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. And I had to talk to myself, I don't know what I'm talking with. Because you have to go back. You have a life, you're, 30, you're in your 30s, you have a lot to, to build, and you cannot just leave everything. You cannot just, because it's like, this strong experiences make me feel like I don't want to play this game anymore and at the same time I have to play this game so I think there is a very angry part of me that don't understand what I'm doing this I just want to be the light if I am that light and I don't want to play this error why is this I see this as an error like was I, was I talking to her and for many, many times I can see like the blessings and being alive and being in this place and, and experience the world, the material world. It's like there are a lot of blessings. But I, it was really um, beautiful to just go in, inside. I could see clearly like there is even this, this blessing things and being alive. There is a, this angry part that doesn't understand why can I just be in that light? Why, do I, why did, did we play this? And this is an ego, because if it's all a game and I'm making it, and we are, it's beautiful, okay, it's just... But there is this part of me that separates it from the, that, that big light, that big light that I am, and this dreaming that I'm dreaming, that sometimes I don't want to be in this dream, I just want to rest in that light. I do, and there is an angry part that doesn't understand why I'm playing this game. And probably re- asking for guidance and being the way and being the truth will help me and I will make or understand or do not understand. But the exercise was really strong for me to really see what was going on. It's not the little dramas. Maybe this is a little drama too, I don't know, but I could see what is really going on. And it was really powerful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you everybody for just being so willing. And yeah, just give yourself, and you see it's so effortless. It's actually so effortless because we are the light. So effortless to just tap into it. So I was thinking, you know, let's just hold it like this precious, precious experience. It's we're worthy to have it all the time, and and it's inside of us. So let's just hold it and give us ourselves a few moments before we leave here for lunch. And Slava will just play us another song. You just give yourself over to this experience. Have your eyes closed. And no need to think about anything. Just let your mind just be, rest. Just be resting. Resting God. And resting God. Just give yourself permission to that.
with no words left to say. We walk into the mystic hand Of love we stand, we have reached heaven. God, we are.
flying like a dove our white wings we spread it's just a Know that you have permission to stay with the stillness if you feel to all throughout the day. Everybody will understand if you want to be inward. If you want to join with people, you can join. But just remember that the purpose is always the same. It's just to have true empathy with each other, always. And um, we're gonna pray in the next couple of hours among ourselves about what the Spirit has in store for us this afternoon. But let's come back here at 3 o'clock after lunch. Enjoy lunch. Thanks.